First one, Dave, it's first time we've had a chance to speak to you, so welcome to Stoke. Thank you very much. For the yeah. supporters who maybe don't know too much about you, can you just outline your past, your history, what's the path that's led you to Stoke City? Well, I'm head of performance here at the club, and that basically encompasses uh, sports science, strength conditioning, nutrition, and uh, preparation of the players in terms of their fitness um, and helping them to perform their best training and on match days. This is a key period then pre-season for you personally? Yeah, a huge period of, uh, of the season for us. It's now that we get all our preparation work done that hopefully will sustain us through the whole season and allow us to have a really successful season. Uh, we're preparing the players to play the style that the manager wants to play and uh, so far so good. It's a lot of work for everybody, isn't it? The players have got to come in, get used to a new manager, used to yourself. There's a lot of different ideas, different ways of doing things differently. How do you gauge the thoughts of the players and make sure they're taking the information in correctly? Well, fundamentally, we start with the philosophy of how we want to prepare the players. And then um, we've, we've got a style of training that we like to uh, impart to them, uh, both on the pitch and off the pitch. And really after that, we have to quickly assess how the players can cope with that. So some will naturally take to the training, others will find it a little bit harder. And we'll work with them to help them adapt uh, as soon as they can. And for the ones who can cope, we'll push them on as hard as we can to get them to the level we need them to play. I know we're only today, you're saying this is your 21st year doing this now. Yeah. How different is it from, from when you first started, the, the, the treatment of the lads and, and the way they come back to pre-season? Well, fundamentally, they're easier to work with nowadays because uh, it was certainly a harsh school when I started off. Nowadays, the players are fully aware of how training works, uh, whether we're using technology, the training methods that we use, um, and the information that they're, they've been exposed to from even the academy ages. So frequently they are intelligent they're asking questions they want information that's the modern footballer um, back in the day they didn't want us to do any additional work um, so thankfully we're able to do a lot more now with the players the levels have gone up significantly um, you can see that in in the world cup you can see it in the premier league um, but it's now in all leagues and even into non-league now players are a lot fitter um, and, and they're happy to be trained that way and they're buying into it more aren't they they can see the benefits of it all yeah, it doesn't mean they like it, but they can start to see the benefits. Um, the last few weeks has been particularly hard for them. We've introduced a lot of uh, training methods that they haven't been exposed to for quite a long time, uh, be it at this club or at other clubs. Um, so that's, that's stressing them and it's, um, it, it's challenging them, but we believe in the system and we believe in the methods. We've seen the results previously and we're hoping that we'll see similar kind of results here. And you all have different methods, you all have different ways of doing it. Some like to slog mountains, some like to do the work on the pitches. How do you see it all? Do you just see it as different ways of getting the same end result? Yeah, well, fundamentally it comes from how we're going to have to play the game. Um, the manager has his philosophy of how he wants to play and we, uh, we use a training system that allows us to get the most out of the players to apply to that. Um, we'll expose the players to a lot of, uh, a lot of speed work, uh, high speed work. Um, now that, that's quite stressing on the body when you ask them to run at 100% of the maximum speed. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time for us to be able to get the volume of work in. Um, but we've also seen an increase in the intensity of training here as well. Um, the durations that they're able to cope with, the types of training that they're asked to do. Um, they've, they've taken to it with a great heart um, and you know, their compliance for everything we've asked has been top notch. So you know, initial impressions are really, really positive, um, but we have to push them onto new levels that maybe some of them haven't been to before. The intensity of training, does it continue on an upward trajectory on the way through to that first game now? Yeah, we're, we're, we're building foundation at this stage, um, you know, plenty of double sessions, we've been on the pitch for doubles, we've had mornings on the pitch and afternoons in the gym, um, but we've also built in the appropriate rest when that's appropriate for them, um, and, and so far so good, you know, um, we've, we've had most of the players out most of the days doing all of the work. You're off to Germany, three games out, two games out in Germany, but obviously with the second one being 2.45 minutes. Yeah. Do you work the lads differently when you've got match preparation to, to fit in there as well? Yeah, it's not that we'll take our foot off the accelerator. Um, these next two weeks, where, or this week and next week, where we're training through matches, we're still trying to build that fitness and we're still trying to build that reserve. Um, and even that will continue in through the early part of the season where we're trying to build up tolerance. Um, 
but eventually we'll have to take our foot off the accelerator a little bit in terms of the, the, the volume of work we're going to do to allow them to be sharp and ready to play games. That's what they have to do. They have to perform when, when the whistle goes at the start of the uh, league season and we want to give them the best chance to be physically prepared to do that. Away from the pitch, these trips abroad tend to give the players a chance to, to learn about themselves, learn about each other. What do you take from it when they're out, out of the country? Do you work with them differently? Do you work with them the same? Or uh, Well, this is quite a different way that we've worked in the past. Um, normally, we would go away right at the start of pre-season. Um, and we, we do a lot of our training in an embedded state at a training camp um, where we can maximise rest and we can maximise our training. Uh, with a games programme in the middle of pre-season, yeah, the games certainly are our focal point. We need to prepare the players to that. Um, the place that we're going to is, is uh, in an isolated part of Germany, so the players will be able to spend a lot of time together and get to know each other. And the new players who've come in um, will we'll get a chance really to bond and integrate well with the players. Um, but it, we'll also have those games as a nice focus for them to see how they perform. Is it interesting to see the dynamics of the group when you're with them at 24 hours a day, away from, away from the, the base of Clayton Wood? Yeah, well, you, you get to see what kind of things they do when they uh, get a chance to relax, you know. But it's not always uh, identical to when they're, they're at home and they're relaxing. Um, but, you know, we'll start to see, you know, how the different subgroups interact, um, both at dinner time and time when they've got away from, uh, from the training pitch.